Um, uh, Lin Linda Kekos? Here. Rodney Kunath? Um, Councilor Ma Marianne Labarge? Present. Kathy Murray? Here. Marilyn Claire? Michael Morton, hello? Hey, Michael. You were Hi. my next, you were the next name I was gonna say. Oh, thank you. Okay. It's nice to be part of the meeting. Yes, it's nice to have you. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. And uh, Amy Sugi Sugihara? Here. Hello, okay. So, um, it looks like there's no one here for public comments. Is that correct, Keith? I don't see any public right now, no. Okay, cool, thanks. I mean, okay. Um, and now to approve the, the minutes from last month. Is there a motion to approve the minutes a from last month? A motion to approve the meetings, motions of last month. I second that motion. Um, I, I gotta abstain from that because I wasn't at the meeting, so. Okay. Um, so, um, Linda? Well, I wasn't at the meeting, but I... Oh, that's right. You weren't there. I'm sorry. Yes. I, I read them, so... Yeah, me too. Okay, cool. Um, Rodney, do you approve of the minutes from last month? Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Kathy Mary? Yes. And it looks like Marilyn is not here. Uh, Michael? Oh, you, 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 already, you already said that you approve. Um, sure. Amy, Amy? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. And next we're going to introduce Meg Bondara. She's going to talk about her um, new accessible, accessibility, sorry, accessible trails legislation. Um, paved trails for all. Hi, welcome, thanks welcome. for inviting me. Welcome, mm -hmm. Meg. Good to see you. Good to see you. So, um, I hope you all got the PDF that I um, sent to Keith with kind of the more comprehensive information about the bill. Um, but basically the um, trail access bill, which is um, S.446 in the Senate and H.769 uh, in the House is a bill that would expand access on our trails. And um, it would form a working group that would be comprised of trail professionals, as well as people who have disabling conditions and are you know, bringing that lived experience to the table. And that's really important because that's never really happened before. And what they would do if the bill is passed is they would take a look at our entire trail infrastructure system. So that includes paved and unpaved trails. And then they would make res uh, recommendations on how the trail system can be improved with a view towards access. Um, and then the other really great thing about this bill is that um, the working group and the response to the working group's findings has timing attached to it. So the working group will have a year to assess the system and put together a report. And then um, the DCR would be required to officially respond to that report in writing. And part of their response would be a plan. And the goal would be to increase trail access and funding for trail access within three years time. Um, so there are lots of ways that the shared use paths are accessible right now, but accessibility can be improved in a lot of really um, significant and, and kind of basic ways. But also um, I've been here talking about unpaved trails before and unpaved trail access is really um, limited and really needs to be expanded. And some of the trails themselves that are designated as accessible can really have a lot of improvement. There needs to be sort of a big education component component at improving the, um, the outdoor experience when you're on accessible trails. So I think that um, this bill being passed would touch a lot of those areas, provide some education, 
and would also just help do one of the most basic things that we need at a state level, which is assessment of the trail system, because even getting information about the trail system is really difficult. So um, I would really love for this commission to um, support the bill, and um, that would look like writing a letter to the commission that is reviewing it at a state level, saying that um, you are in support of the bill, so cool. and it's, it's something that we can um, present at the hearing for this bill, and it's something that we can just send to the committee before they even have the hearing. So I'm happy to take any questions you have about it. Counselor? Yes, Meg. Mm -hmm. On the unpaved trails, mm -hmm. okay, so regarding the new Massachusetts Trail Access Bill, all right, mm -hmm. that bill already approved and voted on, or what? No, we're hoping to get it um, approved. What? It's it's pending right now. Okay, what's the House bill on that? It's H.769 in the House. And um, on the Senate side, it's presented by Senator Joanne Comerford. And on the House side, it's presented by Representative Michelle Ciccolo and um, Representative Mindy Dome from Amherst is also a co-sponsor as are um, a, a nice handful of other senators and representatives. How about our state rep, Lindsay Sabadosa? Not yet, I'm hoping so. Um, I have had conversations with Lindsay Sabadosa, and I know that um, the representative has been supportive of trail access and has reached out to the DCR. So I'm hoping that she'll sign on as a co-sponsor. Oh, I think she will. Mm -hmm. She's really good. I'm hoping that like, maybe I might give her a call too. In That'd be great. Of, of supporting that bill, I think mm -hmm. it's critical. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. I also want to talk about, I thought I heard you mention about the funding. About every three years, where do you expect to get the funding? Well, I think that there's recognition on the state level that the DCR has been significantly underfunded for quite some time. Um, so I think it's an important assurance for the DCR that knowing that the state wants to allocate more resources towards okay. accessibility and accessibility in outdoor spaces. So um, I think being having the idea that funding to do this um, working group research and to expand access is a priority and is something that the state wants to invest more dollars in is important on, on all sides of this. Um, you know, and we also have um, ARPA money and we have um, just, I'm on the board for um, Massachusetts Recreation Trails on the MARTAB board. And I know that increasing state funding is something that's being talked about sort of across the board and looking at improving accessibility is a goal of MARTAB as well. On the bill, mm -hmm. does it mention about funding and so forth of where that funding will actually be? It doesn't say where the funding will actually come from. And I think that has to do with just because that's part of the budget allocation process. What it does say in the bill is that, um, you know, in, the goal is to increase funding spent on accessible trails yeah, and yeah. that, you know, all of this would be contingent on, you know, the DCR having adequate funding to do that work. Now, does Keith have that bill? Um, I don't know. It's available online. And because it's pending, it's also not set in stone. So okay. the, the process that happens is um, first you get a bill introduced, which we've done, check. <laughs> and yeah. um, then you get assigned to a committee. We've been assigned to a committee, um, the Joint Committee on Environment and Natural Resources. Yeah. And then that committee reviews the bill. And during that process, they could recommend changes. They could recommend the bill move on. They could say, we don't think this is something that should move on. And they could also send it back to sort of the, the beginning, like in Monopoly, you know, going back to start. Um, so th those are their options. And really what we're hoping for right now is that the committee will 
see this bill and see the support for the bill at the community level and send it on to the next phase with a yes. And then that next phase, there's also an opportunity for the bill to be um, changed and molded a little bit. So right now, nothing is set in stone. Yeah, there's would, just a good, a good structure. Right. I would assume what level or what committee is it at right now? The That's Joint Committee House. on Environment and Natural Resources. And then where is it going after that? Um, well, after, if, if the committee approves the bill, then it goes into what's called the three readings phase. Yeah. And that's essentially, um, it gets read three times and goes through the evaluation process for each body of government on its own. And then if it passes that, then it goes to the governor's desk and the governor gets to make the yes, no, or maybe decision. Because they're going to look at that language very, very carefully. And yes. Be, and they're going to, I know, because I've mm -hmm. been involved in some of them mm -hmm. and it does not happen overnight because mm -hmm. they're going to look at language and if they feel, well, that's way too strong, they're going to bring it down at a level that you want to make sure all three of the committees that it's going to go to, that it's going to move. Yeah, yeah. And the language been waiting for one bill now for two years. <laughs> yes, uh -huh. unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. And so um, the language was crafted and came directly from Senator Comfort's office and staff. And it's their policy people who've looked at it. Um, basically, um, myself and um, the other organizations that are involved were really involved on in a, a consulting capacity uh -huh. and in a bringing this issue forward capacity and saying this is something that we have um, an area for growth and that an area that needs change and improvement in the state. And they agreed and then they really put together the language. So that part's up to them. <laughs> okay, my, my big question now is I have not seen that bill and I am very uncomfortable because I cannot make a recommendation right now until at least see I, I see the language of that bill. Yeah, it's available um, online. I can send a link. I'm happy to do that. Can you send that link to us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. To the Commission on Disabilities, that would make our life easier. Mm -hmm. Sure. And that way, with our next meeting, hopefully we can put this back on the agenda and make a decision. Yeah, yeah. And for um, in terms of the support side of it, the sooner the better, because we have no idea when we may get a hearing. It could be in May, it could be in June, it could be in November. I have no idea. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and nobody does. That's just part of the process. <laughs> and I think if we're going to do it, we want to do it right. Mm -hmm. And I think that language is critical of what we're supporting here to the state. So can I ask... Um, Meg, what you sent to Keith and Keith sent on to us mm -hmm. that the language and the maybe the summary of what the bill covers, what it's going to do. So that's different from the actual bill itself and the language that Councillor Labarge is asking for or um, like how similar is it? I'm wondering. Yeah, so it's pretty similar in that I just took the, the salient points about who the working group would be made up of, all the different demographics of the working group, the timelines that are outlined in the bill, and what the goal of the bill is. The reading the bill itself is honestly full of a lot of the sort of flourish and nuance of how they construct things language-wise in terms of bills. Um, and then it does have some things in it about like who specifically is you know, sort of um, who specifically the bill is targeted towards. So that would be the Department of Conservation and Recreation and Mass Fish and Wildlife and what their responsibilities are in terms of um, what I laid out where their, their responsibility is basically to respond in writing to the working group's plan. So it's not, it's not really dissimilar. My, um, my PDF is basically just the salient points and facts. And the bill itself is full of that sort of minutia and flourish of language. Okay. Um, Councilor Barge, I totally understand and appreciate your thoroughness and wanting to read the bill. I 
I know personally, um, seeing and reading Meg's summary, and once I read the bill, which I have not yet, I, I will come to the same um, understanding for myself and be supportive of us as a commission writing a letter and supporting this bill. I mean, I think it's imperative and crucial and um, thank you, Meg, for all the work that you have done to make this bill come to where it is, you know, in, in Massachusetts. So it's huge. And Meg, it's a lot of work, I know so, because we have designed bills before. And it, it, believe me, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I have a lot of respect for what you're doing and the group is doing. It's a lot of hard work. Yeah, as you all know. <laughs> <laughs> And what you're really doing is you're fighting for your rights here. That's what yeah. it's all about. Yes, it's absolutely a you're civil looking, rights, you're environmental justice. You're at your quality of life. Right, and yeah. You deserve it. Yeah, I think, I think everybody does. I think that's the point is right. accessible spaces are everyone's spaces. And what we're talking about is environmental justice and mm -hmm. equity okay. in terms of civil rights and access to public land. We're also talking about public health. There's physical and mental wellness um, and health benefits to being able to access the outdoors and everyone should be able to do that. Exactly. Especially because we're spending tax dollars to do it. So we're spending tax dollars to create trails and we should make sure that everybody has access to them. Thank you so much, Meg. Thanks. Yeah, and I would just like to um, just say that I completely support the bill and would feel great about the commission um, getting getting behind the bill. So whenever whenever everyone feels ready to do that, I, I'm definitely ready. Um, I personally experienced one of them, uh, one of the trails recently. I went to an accessible trail in um, Belchertown with my a group of friends, and I I, I got to say it was like one of the one of the greatest experiences I've ever had. Be, I've never in my lifetime been able to go out do and do an act outdoor activity like that. Um, where my you know my friends go hiking all the time. I've never been able to go hiking with any you know an outdoor hike type situation with anyone. And, and um, I'm 45 now, but I can and I can definitely say that if that if I experienced that when I was younger, it um it would have been incredible. You know, when I was a child, a disabled child, being able to go out with my family and mm -hmm. I mean it's like it's so it's a life changing thing that you're doing, and I really support it. So thank you. Have you read it, Jeremy? Um, I, I haven't like read the language of the bill, but I've um I've been to other I've been to um, meetings with um the, for the um I've for that Meg has had for the unpa unpaved trails for all, yeah. and I've been following her work, and so oh, I haven't yeah. you know fully read the bill, but but I have been following the work, and I definitely support it a hundred percent. Then what I would suggest that Megan is going to be sending the bill to the Commission on Disabilities as soon as possible. And let us read it, because to me, it's very valuable. I don't approve anything until I read it, okay? And in June, we can go ahead and vote on it, uh, you know, making a letter. Great. That sounds great. Thanks. I appreciate it. Jeremy, and I appreciate your, your comments about your experience on trail. It's really powerful and just really wonderful. So thanks for sharing that. Awesome, thank you. And I'm excited to go to more trails that, that, that they have. So um, yeah, yeah, looking forward yeah. to it. <laughs> Great. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Anybody else have any questions for Meg? Thanks for being here today. Yeah, I thank know. you. My pleasure. Okay, Um. so Marilyn, I saw that you came in during the meeting. Yeah. So hello, how you doing? Hello everyone, sorry to be late. Oh, that's okay. Um, so our, we're next we're gonna share a letter from the Director of Planning and Sustainability, um, Carolyn Misch. Um, it's, it, it looks like the um, sentence on our agenda is incomplete, so I'm not sure what it's regarding. It is. Yes, I, I did notice that today when I pulled up the agenda. <laughs> that's um, okay. It's about the revolving funds. Um, so going back to, a uh, question that um, was discussed. Amy had some kind of follow-up questions with that, um, and also Councilor Barge. Um, so, um, 
Carol Mish, my director. She cannot be here today. I did ask her to uh, kind of discuss that. And, you know, some of the questions were, you know, what can, it be, what can the money be used for, but also what is the process for, um, for creating that fund? Um, so uh, I didn't send the, the letter out. I'll, I'll, when I send the minutes from today, I'll, I'll follow up with, with the letter, uh, but I can read it right now. Um, and the first half of it is um, uh, very similar to um, kind of the language that well, it's, very, it's kind of um, discussing some of the language that's in the current bill uh, or ordinance that allows for it. And then the second half gets into more detail about some of the questions that we had. Um, so in lieu of, this is Carolyn speaking, in lieu of being able to come to this meeting, I do not want to respond regarding this question around the use of revolving funds that has been established. These funds can be used on a variety of services, including physical and spatial services to enhance mobility and access to public spaces, programs and services for those with disabilities. These activities specifically include American Sign Language interpretations for city meetings, lending resource library, printed materials in large print and braille, handicap signage, printing of access in Northampton booklets, city website accessibility, purchase of ADA regulation booklets and materials, training costs, educational programs, consultants, and publicity and informational materials, such as brochures, posters, or informational mailings related to the ADA. Additional expenditures may include design costs, architecture fees, plan and studies to make city buildings, programs, and services accessible to people with disabilities, and further implementation of accessibility improvements consistent with the goals of the ADA Transition Plan, Sustainable Northampton Comprehensive Plan, other city plans goals. Um, so this is where um, a little more detail. Though this pot of money is not used in every year, nor is it spent down every year, it is beneficial to maintain enough reserves to be able to leverage other funds for projects that cost significantly more, such as sidewalk and curb cut ramp improvements and design services for building upgrades. Some grant programs require a local match to be provided and this reserve fund may be used toward that. This fund can also fill gaps in other funding for projects that directly enhance programs or space for people with disabilities. In addition to the revolving fund, there are also limited general funds within the planning office budget that are available on occasion and depending on the budget that are generally departmental operational funds, which can be used for to support efforts of the Committee on Disabilities, as well as other committee staff within our with our departments, the city uh, planning. This could include training for committee members related to serving on the committee, printing and mailing costs to, distri to distribute information to the public, advertising and other operational needs. So the last sentence there, we could use um, planning funding for printing uh, of posters and things like that. So that kind of addresses the um, uh, the event in July. Um, and then just the other point about having that reserve fund, um, you know, I think one question we had was, you know, we don't spend, it doesn't seem like we spend this money fast enough. Um, you know, can we use it for other things or what is the process for doing that? But um, the design costs um, that we were, we set aside to, for City Hall, we were going to use, um, at, I think, like $10,000, 10 to $12,000 for design, right? And all at once that would go away, but that would kind of like, if we got the grant, that would uh, more than double the amount of work that could be done because we're only spending 10 to 12 of that, but we're getting uh, 50 to 60 in the actual project cost. Um, so that's the whole length of the, the letter, but um, I'm here to ask, uh, answer any questions. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Um, what I'd like you to do, Keith, 
I would like you to send me that letter. Yep. Okay. I have some concerns here on the comprehensive plan, which I was highly involved in. So I would like to see that letter. Mm -hmm. I will forward it after the meeting. Yep. I appreciate that. Um, so just to reiterate um, for the July event, um, we can do kind of like limited printings of posters um, and uh, we can't use it to buy catering. Um, but, um, you know, if the commission uh, wanted to receive, uh, if someone, I think we might be able to get a gift from someone, but we can't accept money. Um, like that, um, so. Are you saying that if the commission wanted to go to a business to see if they would like to donate and they said yes, then we think you cannot accept that money? We can't accept money, but I think if or there check? was, no, no, no check. There's no, there's no way to, um, taking that money to the commission. There's, we don't, there's not like a fundraising apparatus. Well, I think possibly, Keith, just like we do have in the city and city councilors approve it, where people donate to a certain area, like Smith Volk or anywhere. Like we have DA Sullivan right now, who is sending a $10,000 right to the Arts Council. So why could we not have a special account for people who would like to donate for the Commission on Disabilities? We have several people who donate in different areas in our city of committees or whatever. And the Arts Council is a biggie. Smith Oak also. So I'm just curious about that. Uh, maybe you can check that out. If not, I'll talk to the mayor because I feel that there might be quite a bit of people out there who would look at the Commission on Disability and make out a check, even if it was $50 or $100. It adds up. Yeah, that doesn't exist right now. Uh, we'd have to do some research how to, how to do that. So okay. So we can get stuff printed for um, the Crip Camp movie showing and have that. Covered. That is correct. Just send me the file, and I will I'll put it on our account with yeah uh, the printer. Either I'll print it, or we can we have an uh, account. Yeah. I think um, I I think. Amy, Keith just sent a message and I wouldn't wasn't able to catch that. Something about the city can receive a check. Keith, can you put that can you put that back up? Oh yeah, it says here um said commission may receive gifts of property, both real and personal, in the name of the city or town, subject to the approval of the city council in a city or or the board of selectmen in a town such gifts to be managed and controlled by said commission for the purposes of this section. Yeah, that's uh, that's a state law that's saying that it I, can happen, but we would still need to do something in the city to allow that for the Disability Commission, I believe. Yeah, I, I shared that. That's from the Mass General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 8J, and I cannot speak to the intersection between the state laws and the local laws. Thank you, Ben. Um, so two quick things. Um, I just want to be clear with um, with my requests for inquiry into this that 
I have no desire to spend down these funds, Keith. And mm -hmm. uh, you had implied that in what you were saying, that a desire to spend down the funds. And that is absolutely not what I was communicating with any of my messages. So my inquiry has been, um, how was this established? Why was it established this way? And is there a way to revisit it? Because if the mayor would like for the Disability Commission to put on a Disability Pride Parade March annually, could where would those funds come from to, to make that happen? That's where my questioning started coming from. That's why I was asking, mm -hmm. well, how can we do this? Is there a way to get funding for that? And um, so I just would like to clarify that for the record for everyone so that I'm understood. Um, and what you read, there was something in what you read, maybe in events or program, I'm not gonna get the, the wording right and I can look at it when you send the letter out, but that made me think, oh, it sounds like a parade would be covered with yeah, these funds. Too. Um, so that is something certainly to, for us to figure out based on um, uh, what Carolyn Mish wrote and sent. Definitely. Thank you, Amy. That's a really good point. Um, so uh, we did look at it. Uh, there's similar uh, language like this um, for other commissions um, in the city, and we that have revolving funds. So there's several revolving funds in the city. And uh, we did look at it, and the language that we have is very similar. It's almost verbatim of um, the checks on it, who authorizes it, you know, and the language is something like authorized by the director of so-and-so with approval from the mayor and the commission. So there's a few of those in there, um, uh, or and then you know it talks about how long it goes on for. It's it's recurring, um, and there's other limits on it too, like the amount of money that can be spent, or on specifically the things that it can be spent on, um, and um, but um, so the the language is very similar to that. Um, and why it was established like this, I think, you know, partly because we want to, I mean, if you look at the original order from 2012, so there's, there's three orders, uh, ordinances that applied the revolving funds. The one that establishes the revolving fund from 2012, um, uh, it has that nice flourishy language that uh, Meg talked about when it goes to, you know, the, when the lawyers establish it. But, um, you know, it's, it um, it's kind of creates like a, the uh, the limits to what you can do. Uh, when was the language changed on that, Keith? Uh, I mean, the only language that I know of is the the one that we did in 2021 or 2022 to um, add the design and architecture fees for applying for that grant. Yeah, um, I talked with, I was at Chris Malamas' house yesterday and um, going over the comprehensive plan that we worked tirelessly on. Hopefully, Chris will be at the next meeting because um, I don't know. But I know what you're talking about, the revolving funds, because we approve them at city council. Or if not, we deny it, whatever. So, okay. Uh, 
Anyone else? Hi, Mary. Okay. Mary, well, um, yeah. The next um, agenda item basically. Hey, the, Jeremy. Oh, Mary. sorry. Oh, I didn't see you. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Mar who's, who's talking? Marilyn. Marilyn, gotcha. Okay. In this thing that you read, I'm not going to make any sense here, but the letter about what you can spend the money on and so forth, it mentions personal. What would that be? Did anybody make? I, I, didn't, think... hear, I didn't hear that, Marilyn. The letter that Keith read about what the money could be spent on, it said something about personal right. things. And I was just curious. She wants an explanation of personal. Where it's written personal on it, Keith, then maybe you can explain what that details personal. Oh, uh, we can't hear you, Keith. <laughs> I didn't mean to throw a red. I, I can't hear Keith. Can other? Can anyone else? Hear who? I can't right. hear Keith. I mean, that's, a, that's a big can word. It, can you hear me now? Oh yes, I can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's. There's no. I didn't. I didn't. If I said personal, I didn't mean to because I just did a word search. There's not anything in there. And I was looking at there's something similar um, to that, but um, I mean brochure, uh, poster, um, yeah. Uh, I don't see any, anything about personal. Uh, I didn't think so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I didn't say that, so I was thinking about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, the next uh, topic is just basically a continuation of what we were talking about, is the, the logistics for July 11th, basically can keep talking about that. Um, set up facilitating discussion after the movie and getting the word out. Um, we had talked about, um, Keith, Keith and I had talked about through email, um, about moving the time, start time for the event so that we can have a little bit more discussion time. Yeah. Uh, and so Keith said he was able to start, would be able, we'd be, that we'd be able to start at one thirty instead of two. Yeah. Um, would that be, does that sound good to other people? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're starting at one thirty. Yeah, because um, otherwise, if we started two, that only leaves us with 16 minutes for a discussion, and it seems like that's not really enough time. Um, where an extra half hour would give us, you know, that that would be that would be that's helpful. Fine. Okay, cool. So it's one thirty to what? To four. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um. Keith, did you have any any updates on that or anything? Uh, I mean, nothing has changed. Uh, I mean, uh, in the next four weeks, uh, I'm going to be going there to do a run through of the setup, and um, I'm going to watch the movie ahead of my time myself and see if there's a way we can kind of just um, see what the flow of the movie is, and if there's a way we can. Um, if there's a chapter in there or something we can skip over so we have an additional time. Um, I mean, they, they listed the runtime and the kind of expected uh, discussion time. And we did give ourselves another 30 minutes. But, you know, if there's um, the first chapter is like the credits or something or, you know, whatever it is. Um, uh, so, but um, I think if I go there and kind of set up beforehand, um, we should have no, no problem being ready at one thirty because we get the room at one. Yeah. Um, so. Cool. And you've said that you've heard. About, oh, sorry, Marion. Um, I was just gonna ask one quick thing, Keith. You said that you heard you heard back from um, other commissions, you, like. Three... I've heard back from three people. So um, the Ware Commission on Disability will be coming with three people. 
I have not heard uh, any response uh, by phone, email, or mail uh, whether anyone else is coming. And I did ask to be notified um, a few weeks ago. Uh, I mean, I sent the letter months ago. I said, please let us know. Oh, like an RSVP? R yeah, yeah, RSVP, uh, like last month. So, okay. Um, what did you say? I would assume you sent one to Stravas, right? Uh, no, I did not. They're not coming? I did not send one to Stravos, no. Anyways, Jeremy and Commission. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't remember I told you that Chris Palamas and our commission all got together. And on Tuesday, December 16th, the the film was Lives Worth Living. The room was packed. We had it at four o'clock PM. Oh. Room was packed. That was the name of the film. I just wanted to let you know. Okay. I couldn't think of the film, but like I said, I was at Chris's house yesterday. What's the name of it one more time? And we had people from Springfield that attended that. I don't understand this. It's Lives Worth Living, um, yeah. and Forbes Library has a copy if anyone missed it and wants to see it. Yeah, I've never seen that. that it's excellent. Good. It's excellent. It says, this film documents how activists with disabilities played a key role in making this legislation possible through marches, here we go, Amy, protests and civil disobedience. Their goal was to end discrimination against the disabled and to have a better access to employment and other social opportunities. And we even had refreshments after that film. Was that a commission event? Was that a disability yes. commission yes. event? Yes. Yep. There was a lot of reaching out on that. And how would you suggest that we do that this Keith time? Keith is doing it. Keith, okay, okay. But I'm surprised about Stravas because they were there for this, for that film that was shown. We had Springfield, a whole bunch of them. Could have been maybe because of the date of this. You never know. The what? Were they invited? Who was invited? Oh, was I don't they? think that Stravos was invited, right? Is that that's what Keith that's said? What Keith so. said. So can we invite them? Yeah, let's uh, let's do it. Sure. If you, I think it, they should be invited. Keith, is that um, in in your? Uh, in your court to do that? Yeah, it's just it's very easy for me to forward my, create another email. Great. So what else has to happen for that day to be successful? Well, I think that we should try to get the word out, um, maybe in the press, like in the Gazette. I think that would be a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, that's one thing that I had in mind. Um, and um, can can we write blurbs or use the social media blurbs that are in the packet from um, Crip Camp? and put them on the city's social media accounts. That would be great. Does that sound like something we could do, Keith? Yeah, um, there's a couple of different accounts. We have the planning sustainability account. So we do have the um, event created in the calendar. So I will be posting the agenda soon um so that will go out to anyone who is subscribed to discipline commission or lands on the front page but i'll also be putting out a social media um, blast that will, that will include that uh, it's too early because it's only may right now probably do it end of june 
uh, first week in July or something, and it might probably be beneficial to coordinate the proclamation that the mayor uh, seems to be okay with and this so that it can be all at once. Mm -hmm. um, the agenda thing that I'm going to do, that's just, that'll happen. Um, it's not going to be as flourishy because it's just going to be the agenda, mm -hmm. but the the language of like, hey, come on to the meeting or to the event um, could coincide with the proclamation. Um, but the language of that, I'll you know, let you guys deal with that. Okay. Kathy has her hand up. Too. Oh, sorry. Hey, Kathy, go ahead. I just had a question about what we can or can't do because I know that we can't do social media separately for the event other than the city page or on our own page, correct? Mm. But can we can we send it? Can we send the event to um, the Hampshire Life Calendar or to the Chamber to have them publicize it? Is there any issue with that? That sounds like a very good idea, Kathy. It does. I'd be happy to write up, um, you know, a sample press release or just something that we could, uh -huh. the committee could look at, or I don't know if, if Keith, you need to look at it or, or whatever that we could send out, or we could bring it to this meeting next month. Yeah, once something is made up, you can put it on Facebook too. You know how many people in Northampton and all over the place look at Facebook? <laughs> that's where the flyers come in handy because yeah you post them up in businesses definitely and we're not sure about um copyright with the images from crip camp is that correct with what we can use to make our flyers it's going to be on the um the Crip Camp, uh, the screening guide. The screening guide. I, I did. I did look at it, and it said that um, basically the the only mm -hmm. rule it said, it said that for promotional materials, to take to not include the Netflix logo. Okay. So it sounds like we can use the image. I mean, I don't. It didn't say that the image was copywritten, but it says to leave the Netflix or just the mention of Netflix out of any promotional okay. material because it shouldn't. It can't be. Um, it basically said that it can't be observed by anybody to think that uh, that, that it's pr promoted by Netflix because right. Netflix, Netflix should have no involvement in it, basically. Yeah. So, as long as, sense. yeah, so um, I think we could use that image. Um, I had mentioned, I don't, I don't know if you saw my email, Amy, but I had mentioned uh, earlier that uh, the words on the, the flyer, or sorry, the words in the image that we were talking about using which are the images on the screening guide of, of like a boy in a wheelchair with a flag. There's like words over over the boy that says a Netflix documentary. So I'm like worried that like taking those words out of the of, off the image might like mess up the flyer. You know what I mean? Yeah. So maybe maybe we might. So we might want to think about a different image. I guess that's all I was thinking. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but you could we could take a look at it and talk about it. Uh -huh. And the. Uh, Flyer subcommittee is meeting tomorrow, so we can yeah talk about those details tomorrow. Okay, cool. Right. But yeah, we can use the image. Um. So yeah, we're just gonna. Does anybody want to have any ideas? So basically, we're gonna have like we were thinking that we would have two flyers. One is like the just the event flyer which is like an image that says the date and you know the name of the event and then another thing that we that we give out at the event itself which has like information on it seems like um maybe like a disability we were thinking like a disability etiquette etiquette guide something mm -hmm. like that something that would just have more information on it than than you're going to get in the movie hmm. who's on the commission on the flyer um, it's Amy and me and um, Emma and Kathy Murray. Okay.
so were we um, looking for input from folks from the whole disability commission to see about what people might want on something that we hand out to yeah. people coming to watch the movie? Exactly, yes. If anybody has any suggestions to the, um, for something that you'd like us to include in the, in that informational flyer. And then, so you can let us know now or you could email us or, and so basically our plan, our goal is to have this all finalized by next meeting or at the next meeting, we'll we'll finalize all of it and be able then we'll be able to actually make the, the print out the flyers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it probably wouldn't hurt to uh, also send a flyer to the Northampton School Committee and the Northampton Rights Human Rights Commission. That definitely should be done. We did that with ours. Great idea. Um, yeah. Keith, any issues um, with creating the handout flyer in terms of we're, we would be handing it out as a disability commission? No, I don't think so. Um, you know, just uh, I think the final language, uh, the words and stuff, just um, I guess let me look at it and make sure that the all the meeting information is correct and I'll just make sure that it mm -hmm. comports with what I have. I mean, there's no Zoom link, so that is, um, but um, yeah, and uh, we can print it off um, and you know, if we're only doing the little guy, the little ones, you know, the four by page, we can have um, the printer do that and cut it up for us. And then we don't have to do all that, you know. Okay. Um, what about um, the discussion after the movie? I know it'll be short. Um, but I wonder if um, someone from the commission can join you, Keith, to facilitate the questions. Um, I'd be happy to help out um, to facilitate yeah. questions. Me, me, Jeremy, and Emma talk about that as you oh, know, okay. as someone with lived experience. Um, it, for them, be. Um, I mean, there's there's things there that they're going to be able to facilitate and talk about more than I can. So, yeah. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Quickly chime in to say, in addition to that screening guide that I sent you all the link to earlier um, on the CRIP campsite, there's also a discussion guide with advice for leading a discussion. Um, yeah. It's like a curriculum uh, guide. I, I saw that. Yeah. That's really helpful. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Anyone have any any thoughts about about it? <clears throat> okay. Um, next, we're going to talk about the. Well, I guess we talked about the presentation of the flyer, and the, so I think that's basically it. Um, unless we had any other business not anticipated. Nope. Please I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Um, I'll second that motion. Mm -hmm. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>